What's poppin' mangoes? It's your boy Black Ginger back with another episode of Around the World in 80 Days and if you've been following along you know I've been having some major consistency issues lately but I, I just want to get back in the routine so let's begin. <laughs> Our story picks back up in Tokyo, Japan, right after another legendary party last night, but uh, I ended up oversleeping this morning, so I had to book an extra night at my hostel. It wasn't much of a problem, though, because I kind of loved it here. I was basically watching Netflix in bed until about 6 p.m. until I planned on having dinner tonight, and long story short, my non-biological grandmother is Japanese, so when I booked my flight to Tokyo, I asked her to meet me for dinner one night. I wish I could remember the name of the restaurant that we went to, but we went to the 38th floor of the Yubisu Garden Place Tower, and you know, the restaurant was beautiful, it was, but, but, my, but my grandma forgot that I wasn't really a sushi man, or a, a sushi boy, so, um, uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was about to have a hard time. Of course, I didn't really want to be rude, so I stomached the fish as much as I could, and then we ate sashimi, and, like... Who would eat, like, why do they eat raw fish without the rice to buffer it? That doesn't, that one baffles me. And then we had some steak or some kind of beef, I don't know. And that was great. But then we had, um, we had egg pudding. And, uh, you know, I thought to myself, there's no way they made pudding with just eggs in it, right? I, I'm not really an egg man. I like them scrambled. I don't like them any other way. I didn't really think I was going to like pudding made of eggs, but I, I tried it and, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm not an egg guy, so if you like eggs, maybe you'd like it, but I was disgusted. I'm very sorry. There was honestly a lot going on for me during this dinner, and it was a little overwhelming. I don't know if you guys have any idea how much fish makes me uncomfortable, alive or dead, so uh, I I'm proud of myself for this. Now, on my way back to the hostel, I got a message from Peter, and to understand who Peter is, you have to know that yesterday, I was looking for somewhere to eat lunch, and I walked past a random hotel, and outside was a man named Peter who claimed that he met me the night before, right before this man kicked me in the chest. So, flash forward to today, and now he's texting me to come back and party with him in the party district of Tokyo, Shibuya. Well, how, how do I say no to that? I got the message at 11.15 and the trains in Tokyo stop around midnight, so I had to be quick. I sprinted to my hostel, changed really quick, ran to the train station and made it there at 12.15 just in time for the last ride tonight. And this train was about to take me to the craziest night I could have asked for in Tokyo. On my way to find Peter, I walked past this really pretty girl and I stopped her just to tell her that she had beautiful hair and that was it. That's all I had to say. When I found Peter, we did some pre-gaming at a convenience store, and then we headed to Club TK, but on the way there, I heard a group of guys speaking English, and I, I introduced myself, and that's where I met Andy from California, and he was cool enough that I invited him to the club with us. Then, we're walking down the street, and this next part's gonna sound like I made it up, but I promise it happened, so I'm gonna just tell, I'm gonna just tell you what happened. So we're walking down the street, and a group of Japanese men, they stop us, and they start talking to us in a mixture of like English and Japanese, but luckily Andy spoke Japanese, so we understood everything that they were saying to us. Firstly, they, they told me I was a handsome man, or uh, a handsome boy. And um, then they were standing with this, they were also standing with like this really pretty Japanese girl. And they asked me if I thought she was pretty, so I said, yeah, I, I did. I'm not going to lie to them. Next thing I know, the guy's pulling out wads of, wads of cash from his pocket. And he's trying, to, he's trying to offer, basically, to buy this girl for me. Like, he, he wants to pay her to have sex with me. Now... You know, that almost sounds like a dream come true. Like, it almost sounds like some kind, of, some kind of fantasy, right? But I didn't have any condoms on me, so ultimately, that was my deal breaker. So, I offered the deal to Andy, and I told him, try not to get killed, and if you make it through the night, meet us at Club TK. Simple enough. Well, Andy went with the girl, and he did end up meeting us back at Club TK, and Andy said that he had a pretty good night. And that was... That was supposed to be my night, but it's okay. Anyways, I met this really funny kid at TK, and you have to be 20 to drink in Japan, but he was only 19, so he snuck in with a fake ID. And we were partying for a little while until we headed across the street to get some cheap drinks, and, and he, he, he ended up stealing a beer bottle. A bottle. Not a can, and he had no bottle opener, 
So now we're walking through the street and he's trying to figure out how to open it. He's trying to bite it open and stuff. And then I see these two black guys walking towards me and they look like they were New Yorkers. So I, I was like, hey, do you think you could help us out? So one of the guys, one of the guys, he grabs the bottle and he's like, yeah, I've I seen this before. And then he just, he just smashes the bottle on a wall. And next thing you know, you, he, hands, he hands Cole back an open bottle with like jagged and sharp edges. He just smashed it on a wall. And then the kid drinks the bottle. And, and, and at, at, that point, I, at that point, I knew the kid was freaking crazy. And I wanted to hang out with him tonight. We were back in TK for another 10 minutes before Cole pulled another stunt. So we walk over to the bar. And as soon as the, the, the bartender turns around, the kid reaches over the bar. He grabs a bottle. And he gets away with it. He, we walk into the crowd. Nobody notices a thing. But the thing is, he stole another bottle. A bottle. Not a can. And we still had no can opener. But, but that, that wasn't going to stop him. So what he does, he goes all the way around to the other side of the bar. He talks to a different bartender. And he says, hey, I just bought this, this bottle, but no one opened it for me. Can you help me out? And she takes it from him. And she's like, that makes no sense. We would never do that. And next thing I know, security is just escorting the kid out of the building. And then I'm like this. I'm like, should I stay here and have another party like last night? Or should I go follow that crazy kid out of the club? And luckily for him, I followed him out because he left his bag inside and security was not letting him go back inside to get it. But I got it for him. While we're outside trying to figure out what to do next, this beautiful girl walks out of the building next to me. And I'm like, hey, aren't you that pretty girl from earlier? And she remembered me because... Yeah, that was the girl with the pretty hair from earlier. I'm not going to say too much about her because she had a boyfriend back in Germany. But I shot my shot and we ended up hanging out for the night. Not like just me and her. It was me, her, it was Cole, and then her friends were there too. But we hung out for the rest of the night. And then at like 6 a.m., me and Cole headed to the subways and we parted ways for the last time. I actually wrote in my journal that night that the worst part of my trip is making new family and best friends with great connections with whom I may never see again, or at least not for the next few years. And honestly, that's, yeah, it sucks. I hopped on my subway at 6 a.m. and it was a 45 minute ride from Shibuya to Asakusa. Well, I ended up falling asleep because I was up all night partying and then I was woken up by a train worker back in Shibuya. So I ended up taking a 90 minute ride all the way around in a circle it, but it, it, it's okay, you know, I'm just going to go back to, back to Asakusa and everything's going to be fu- What? Again? Again? What are you talking about? I did it again? I fell asleep twice on the subway. I rode it home, back, home, back, and finally back home. I got back to my bed sometime after 9 o'clock. I was on the subway for over three hours because, I don't know, whatever, but- I finally got back home, and I think that's a good place to end today's episode, guys. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, I don't, I don't start lacking like I did before, but uh, I'll catch you guys later. Live forward, learn backwards. Peace.